Welcome, this is Majesty Sussex Report and I'm Antonio. Thank you for spending some of your time with us. It's an absolute pleasure. So for those of you who watched uh, Majesty Sussex Report after dark, um, here is what the polling is looking like right now in regards to which one we should go with after dark or after hours. And um, I've got what I think is a funny story, or maybe it's not funny. I called my parents. This goes to show doesn't matter how old you get. Um, you know, you, there, there's always moments in time where you're like, maybe I should, I'm going to ask my dad or I'm going to ask my mom or I'm going to ask, you know, um, a close relative or, you know, a really good friend. But, and again, when I say a, a parent, a mom or dad, I'm also saying, you know, those who occupy that space and that role for, for us, that is not or may not be biological, right? Because I know from many people um those relationships don't exist in their bi biological um experience and you know they have other people in their lives that um uh occupy that role so uh so i called them about i said we're just having a conversation because i speak to my parents um as as, as as much as much as i can and so <laughs> i'm talking to them but i i, I said i was like Listen, I've got a question. I'm like, so is after dark a thing? Because I know I've heard that, but my logic is this. And my dad started laughing at me. He's like, he's like, and who has the university degrees again? And I was like, okay, like, just, just like, give me an answer. You don't need to like, you know, make fun of me about this. So um, I, I, I actually brought it down here on a sticky note. So he said, uh, yes, after dark is a thing. He's like, after dark basically means when the sun goes down. The sun goes down, night arrives, it's after dark. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> so my mom is like, yeah, like it occurs like at night. That is, that means after dark. I was like, oh, I was taking it differently. I was looking at it from an angle of, well, after dark, so what happens after dark? After dark, you know, it's light, it's the morning. They're like, no, no, no. It's it's literally, you know, it's good. <laughs> when the day is coming to an end and it's evening time and it gets dark, so now it's dark, so it's after the dark. The dark has arrived. I was like, oh okay so it is a thing all right so i'm not as like dumb as i think my parents are like well <laughs> like i like shut up it's not <laughs> anyway so for anyone out there who was who had a question like i did and i i swear it was my, like my moment of um chicken of the sea um who, who was on that series there was a a, a reality show with uh nick nick lachey i think yeah nick lachey and um uh what's her name again uh she she does shoes also she's an empire with with, with her shoes i think jessica simpson yes um there was this song i used to love uh that she had i wanna love you forever i loved that song i remember like, <laughs> just like Built in that song up in my room, um, you know. When you have these these really great, as a as 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 a very young person, you know, these fantasies of what love means, and you know, when you think you you have a crush or you're in love with someone, and you listen to these, anyways. And thank you so very much for all of you who commented on um, the episode. Yeah, um, yesterday. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so let's start um, with the stories for today. We'll start with headlines and um, let's get into our first story. Prince Harry goes back to court. Home and Country Magazine. Prince Harry wins right to appeal court decision on his security. Story by Victoria Murphy. Back in February, 
Prince Harry was dealt a blow when his attempts to challenge the decision-making over his security arrangements were dismissed by the UK's High Court. However, today the case has taken another turn in the Prince's favor as the UK's Court of Appeal has granted him permission to challenge that judgment. In a court order made public today and dated May 23, 2024, Lord Justice Bean granted the Duke of Sussex permission to appeal, saying that he has been persuaded the prince could succeed. Referring to the decision of High Court Judge Sir Peter Lane, the order reads, Although the carefully reasoned judgment of Sir Peter Lane may prove to be correct in all respects, I am persuaded, not without hesitation, that an appeal on ground one would have a real prospect of success. Justice Bean did not agree that all of the arguments Harry's legal team put forward were persuasive, and he did not grant their request to expedite the appeal and have it heard by the end of July. However, the move nevertheless represents a significant victory for the prince and his lawyers in the long and ongoing battle. Thank you. So here we are back at this with the um, security and the court system. Um, listen, to Lord Justice Bean, thank you for taking a look at the case. And, you know, I, I, I love the way Justice Bean sort of didn't disrespect um, High Court Judge Sir Peter Lane. He basically said, listen, you looked, you looked at the same thing that I looked at and you came to your conclusion. I respect your conclusion. I think you had valid points in your conclusion. But I've looked at this stuff also, and I think there's something there, right? There's something there. So I'm gonna let them. I'm gonna let them go ahead, right? And 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 appeal this this um this decision because there's something there. Now I'm not saying that he's going to win it. I'm not saying that you know he may be able to completely satisfy everything, right? But there's enough there, I think, that there's a possibility that he might win it. So that's what Justice Bean is basically saying. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that there, there's this, this, this chance again. Now, just, just for backstory for any of you who don't quite understand why this is happening. So this is what has happened. When the security was pulled, when they were in Canada, um, the, 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 the organization or system um, that makes that decision is called RAVEC. RAVEC is, the, is um, the Royal and VIP Executive Committee. Now, when that decision was made to pull to security, RAVEC is sort of like, you know, these people who meet behind closed doors, you don't quite know who's making the decision, and they're the ones who, who made this decision. So... When um, Prince Harry and the family was more settled in, in the U.S., and trying to understand all of this, he basically was like, okay, so I, I will be coming back to the U.K. I want to bring my family, but I don't feel safe. And he has reasons not to feel safe. Remember, the threats against him and his family were higher or as high as the monarch. And that is when the late Queen Elizabeth was alive. She's no longer alive. The media in the UK, all these royal pundits and all these royal morons, and everything that we see in, on social media of these opportunist people who feed into hatred and feed into this I want to say demonic sort of sort of sort of way of 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 looking at people. And let me just make a side comment here. Like I I put images and pictures and stuff. Of course, I don't alter people's faces. I don't I don't add things, subtract things. I don't. I just I just get rid of the background when I need to, and I put the image as it was photographed or or as it was taken. You have these people on social media, like making a person look um, disturbed in a person's face. They, like, what, what is wrong with you people? Anyways, jumping back to our topic here. So 
Harry wants to understand, right, especially after he found out that certain people from the palace were involved in that decision making. Because remember, the argument has been made that no, 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 the palace has nothing to do with this. The royal family has nothing to do with this. This is a government um, um, uh, part of, of, of the, 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 the mandate of the government and is a gov gov government uh, uh, authorized committee that has made this decision. Then you find out like, mm, that's not really true. The royal family actually has a lot of pull and say on that committee. And people who work directly with um, now the king and William are part of that committee. So what he's soon to understand, because he wants to know, well, what, what were the criteria under which the decision was made to pull my security? And what they've basically said is like, no, 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 no. We've pulled your security there, but, but you, you have security in you want to come. So when you hear the royal pundits, when you hear these so-called experts and so-called journalists and so-called, like, we don't understand why Harry is being like this, like the Metropolitan Police and Secrets, they're all fine. Like, he thinks our security is not good enough for him. They're just telling you half-truths. And, 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 and change in context and, and not giving you the entire story. You see, as a born royal, he automatically is entitled to police protection. Now, for some bizarre reason, and we know why, and we know what has happened, his security was pulled which should have never happened. So, the man has got enough money now, right? Because, trust me, that security stuff must be costing them an arm, a leg, and some extra, you know, parts. He now, and for his family, they have their own security. So when, and if, when they come into the UK, he wants to make sure that they have proper security. Now, there's some kind of rule or regulations or something like that. I'm not very versed in in that part of 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 the law, where him as a prince, as a as a as a British citizen, right? He can't really bring in his own security with certain like with guns and stuff. Like there there is some kind of rule against that that. Anyone who's carrying like the gun and the this and the that has to be from the UK. So it has to be the the the, the Royal VIP Executive Committee that authorizes that. But here is a little caveat thing. They're saying, yeah, but he has security. His family will have security. No. The condition under which security will be this, um, assigned is case-by-case case basis. That's what Vravek has said. They pulled his security. Then they said, um, when you're in the UK, we will decide at that time and moment whether or not to assign you or give you security. So he can fly in on a Monday and they're like, yeah, 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 security for you. Then let's say Megan and the kids are flying in on the Thursday and they can decide, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you, you know, no, you, you don't need security anymore. Don't you find all of that kind of strange? So they want to have control over when he gets security and when he doesn't. Isn't that convenient? Isn't that convenient. Does this ring a bell a little bit about when a certain princess said that they were taking security away from her, but then they said, no, she didn't want the security. And then she, you know, because remember, we don't, we didn't get the truth about all that stuff. Right? So when 
Princess Diana said, allegedly, no, I don't want that security because also, keep in mind, they were spying on her, her phone was hacked, all this stuff was happening. So, so, so when Willie goes, oh, she was paranoid, um, and now they're trying to use the same paranoid word to sort of label Prince Harry also. They weren't paranoid. They had reasons to suspect stuff was happening. They just didn't, couldn't, weren't able to identify what that stuff was. But you see, in today's day and age, Prince Harry is doing what his mom wasn't able to do. And gosh, may they be justice. May they be justice. So, Harry launched this legal action against the UK Home Office in September 2021, right? Seeking the judicial review of how the decision over his security was made. That is what he's suing for. Because once he knows that, once they know that, then they're able to actually do something about it. So throughout these various hearings and statements, his lawyers have said that he, he, he doesn't feel safe in the UK and he doesn't feel safe to bring his children and his wife, right? And he wants, his, especially his kids, to be able to see his home country. So I, I, I am so happy that um, just as being looked at the stuff again and said, you know what, there, there is, there, there's reasons here, you know, and give, give, give this case another, another, um, breath in, 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 in order for it to move, move forward. I'm just crossing my fingers, my toes, my, my, anything I can cross, I'm crossing it. Um, because he, he, the work that he is doing and the stuff he's trying to do, there are so many obstacles that are being placed in front of him. There's so many interests and people who don't want what he's trying to do to come to light. And I mean a lot of people. And that includes people in the justice system. Allegedly, allegedly. Because let's not forget there's lots of people who belong to the arist aristocratic set that don't like what he's doing because what he's doing basically is exposing a lot of things that they don't want exposed. Not a hope in hell, <laughs> simply. I mean, it was a, it was a, there was a story on the front page of the Times newspaper mm. last Saturday, which appeared to me to be very heavily briefed by mm. Harry's side of the equation, mm. whether it was done with or without his knowledge, we don't know, mm. but effectively saying he would be keen to come back and step into the into the uh, into the fray and do, undertake more royal duties while his father was ill and obviously Princess of Wales is is not well either. Um, it also seemed to suggest that there was a kind of tacit support for the idea here. Now that immediately from rung the palace. Yeah, from the palace. Mm. That immediately rung alarm bells with me because I, I just know that mm. is not their thinking. And I made some calls and was told very quickly, absolutely not. Not a hope in hell. <laughs> so she just said, not a hope in hell. Uh, the place with the fire, I guess. Not, not, not a hope. No hope, and she knows no hope. Now, if she knows there's no hope, why then do they keep insisting in these articles and commentaries and this or that 
Oh, Harry should come back and do this. Oh, Harry should come and do this. Harry should be more concerned about it. Harry should blah, blah, blah. Harry should this. We can't wait for Harry to come back. Oh, if, if we do this or that, Harry will come back. That. So if you know, because you seem to be well briefed, if you know there's no chance in the fireplace that the palace would want Harry to come back to do anything at all, then... That part of that storyline needs to come to an end, right? Would you not think? I mean, because I think it certainly could come to an end. And I love how she's acting as if she was the offended party, right? Like she's the one making the decisions for the royals. Like how dare he? How dare he even like suggest that he would come back and help um, the king, his father? How dare he? I knew, I knew that that, that, that was never true. The, the, the assertion that Prince Harry contacted the palace expressing a desire to return and undertake more royal duties lacks any substantiated evidence, period. It is crucial to recognize also that this whole narrative seems constructed more on speculative suggestions <laughs> rather than any facts whatsoever. She claims that Harry's story being heavily briefed by Harry's side um, it, 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 it's also very questionable, as there is no confirmation that Harry or his representatives were involved in any of this. And besides, they have like, you know, the one person that they hired for, for um, the UK. And everything that has come out, out of their camp has been pretty, you know, forthcoming. When they need to make a statement, they make a statement. For the moment, the, the whole premise that the palace would entertain such a notion, especially without any concrete support, appears to be a fabricated, you know, a, 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 a fabrication designed to, of course, stir up controversy. And and this tactic of of creating a problem, right, and then presenting some kind of solution or, or indignation is very common. It's a very common strategy among media critics and does very little to foster any genuine um, understanding or resolution. So <laughs> the claims should be viewed critically and with a very high degree of skepticism. But, you know, I don't know, there's something about her. Yeah, she's just becoming a, my favorite person. Favorite. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you who show up for this channel all the time with your likes and your comments and just being interactive so that this channel can continue to grow at an acceptable pace and that others like-minded people can discover the channel so if you're a subscriber please make sure you have your notification on so you know when new um, videos material has been uploaded if this is your first time around here a very big welcome and thank you for being here and thank you for coming this far into the video and you're still here so that is a good thing and since you're still here it takes about a second subscribe um, like or leave a comment of course the caveat here about leaving a comment if it's mean-spirited or it's something that doesn't need to be posted I will delete it it will be deleted it will not be posted don't waste your energy on any of that stuff if you're here to say something mean about the Sussexes or some kind of big discovery you think I should have let me save you the time no need to do that you're not changing my thoughts or my opinions they're well rooted and founded okay but thank you anyways once again thank you very much for your support now back to our regular programming Newsweek magazine
Queen Camilla's Very Awkward Reaction to Protocol Breach Story by Jack Royston Queen Camilla appeared to physically retreat when France's First Lady attempted to take her hand during a D-Day commemoration event. Brigitte Macron joined Camilla to lay flowers during a Royal British Legion ceremony marking 80 years since the Normandy landings on June 6, 1944. The pair were at the British Normandy Memorial in Vers-sur-Mer, France, when moments later, Macron reached over, seemingly hoping to hold the Queen's hand. However, a video clip published by the Daily Mail showed Camilla step away from her host, even as the First Lady followed, continuing to attempt to hold her hand. There are officially no formal rules governing how to greet a royal, but it is widely understood etiquette that there should not be physical contact unless the royal family member initiates it or agrees to it first. In the past, such breaches have often been met with reciprocal warmth. For example, when Michelle Obama hugged Queen Elizabeth II without realizing it was not expected, but still earned a hug in return. Camilla, however, appeared in no mood to stand holding hands in front of a memorial to British soldiers killed in Normandy with Macron, even as a guest in France. Antonio, back to you. Thank you. Look, say what you may about the late Queen Elizabeth II, but she always understood the assignment. That woman got it. You know what I mean? She really, she got it. She understood what needed to get done and she did it. Now, I know there's been debates here or there. You know, she should have protected Harry and Meghan better or done this and that. I think, and it's just my opinion, I think she did as best she could under the conditions she had. Remember, her number one role or priority is to protect the crown and to make sure that there is continuity within um, um, the monarchy, right? So the best way possible, I think, she tried to do her best and, and she showed us. She had those little, little signs that for some people may not have been significant, but for the Jubilee, watch and Megan and Harry after her own walk down, understanding the pressure that they likely felt and under. But the Queen made sure they had that grand entrance. She made sure they had it. And the things that we've learned that she secretly would, 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 would do what she needed to do to make sure that, you know, she saw her great grandkids. And no one knew that Harry was there and Meghan was there. You know, she had her ways in which she, 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 she did her stuff. And, you know, the rumor is that she left Harry a, a, a good amount of inheritance, um, which would be fantastic because... She doesn't really need to leave anything to the other, you know, that one, because he has the duchy and the king is the king. So, you know, they're going to continue to build their wealth. Now, go, getting back to um, the escort, I mean, the, 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 the concert. Look, I, I'm not going to be rude to her. I'm not going to call her caballo. You know, caballo in Spanish means horse. I've heard people calling her that. I would never do that because I am not a rude person and I would never call her caballo, right? I wouldn't do that because that is just rude. But I will say to her to get off her high horses. Get off it. You were the person on the phone with a woman's husband talking to him about tampons and about him wanting to be in certain areas of your whatever you yeah yeah you 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 were the one were you not the one also you know doing things with another woman's husband were you not the one also known as a little bit of a mm, what's the word that i can use hussy Hmm? Weren't you? Listen, 
I think if Madame Macron wanted to hold your hands, okay, you need to get off your high horses and pretend you're some purity something because you, you ain't. Now, I saw a little bit of that video and she wasn't trying to hold your hands as far as I'm concerned. She was trying to make sure you step back, right? To show respect that you stepped back. So then the two of you can be aligned and show respect. You will never get the assignment right, my dear. Never. Oh my goodness, did I upset you? Oh, I did not mean to upset you. I can see your eyes are getting all watery and emotional. Are you, is there something wrong, my dear? Is there? What? You're, you, you're emotional about the stories about, did it? You, excuse, what, give me a minute, give me, you're, you're getting emotional over the stories about D-Day, you? 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 Listen, <laughs> I don't know what they did to your photography, right? So to, to Photoshop like tears and all that kind of stuff and make it look watery in your eyes and this whole campaign to continue to make you into this, ah, je ne sais quoi, um, nice person. It may work on the idiots and morons on the island, right? but not on the rest of us. Because we know that you are behind all this crap that is happening. We know that you've got your tentacles, my dear. Your tentacles, my dear. In everything. So, let's just like wrap that up, that little emotional thing you're trying to pull here. Wrap it up. And I always want to be clear, I don't want to end up in a situation like the first lady of Nigeria. So once again, let me make it clear when I say the morons and idiots on the island. I mean the people, like those in media, those that, um, t you know, pretend that, 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 that they are the gatekeepers of, of the institution and of the firm, right? The people who don't exercise critical thinking and when proof is laid out in front of them, they still decide to ignore the proof and go with the fantastical stories that are told. Those are the people I mean. I don't mean you, my dear. I don't mean you that really gets it. That, you know, listens to this channel and, you know, you are a subscriber and all of that stuff. I know you got it, okay? But I always need to clarification. I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> but to clarify, because I never want to end up in a situation like the First Lady of Nigeria. And I think part of my critique over there was maybe she should have clarified what she was saying. So this is moi following my own suggestion. So for my beautiful British people, you know what I mean. Prince Harry rejected King Charles' birthday idea for Princess Lilibet. Story by Alan Johnson and Jamie Roberts. King Charles had planned to give his granddaughter Lilibet a very lavish gift for her second birthday earlier this month before being handed a warning on what to purchase by Prince Harry. The monarch is said to be desperate to create a bond with Meghan Markle and Harry's kids as the youngster turns three. However, while he was reportedly hopeful of providing a pricey present to his granddaughter, it's claimed he was instructed to opt for a less extravagant gift than he had planned by his second-born son. According to OK Magazine, a source explained that Charles had his aides looking at custom-made cubby houses, 
similar to what the Queen and Princess Margaret had when they were girls. The insider added, he wants to give Lily something she will use and be hers. She'll remember it forever. It's going to be the ultimate surprise. Despite the king's apparent private plans for his granddaughter's birthday celebrations, he, alongside other senior royals, noticeably chose not to share a public birthday tribute on Twitter X, as is usually the custom. Antonio. Amara, what, what do you think? Do you, I mean, really, I, I, I would like to know, what do you think? Do you believe any of this? Not a word. I think Harry's got one card to play. I'm just going to put this out there. If Harry came over with the children, there's no way that Charles could refuse a meeting because it would just look terrible. And also, I think he genuinely really wants to meet his grandchildren. I think they've only seen each other once or twice in their lives. So that's what, if, if Harry really wants to see his dad, I suggest he brings his children over. But from what we hear, Meghan is sort of refusing to come to Britain on the basis that there's a security problem. You know, this yeah. is that right, Harry yeah. took the British government to court, that security wasn't provided. Um, and lost that case. And so it's unsafe to bring them. That's the sort of theory. So There's no way that if he, if he brought the kids to Buckingham Palace, say, I mean, those are going to be the most secure children on the planet, you know, and the king's not going to let his grandchildren come to harm's way. I wouldn't be surprised if some special measures were put in to encourage that notion. The Royal Court of Montecito has gathered. Do you have a decision on the request of those idiots? Mama Queen, what say ye? Thank you, Antonio. This Royal Court of Montecito has made its decision, unanimously supported and confirmed by the Royal House of Sussex. No, no, no. Girl, go suck on a pickle. Well, that looks like a pretty cool royal court, and you heard it here first. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everything in between. Um, the royal court of Montecito said it three times. They said no, no, and then no again. And they suggested, you know, to go suck on a pickle. That's the sight, don't you think? Oh, boy. I'm telling you, that court of Montecito, they've got some spice in them. Oh, well, um, Hugh, 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 when I am on the same, same idea that I think you're on. Now, here is the thing. I had that in <laughs> the podcast for After Dark. And I edited it out. But I'm going to sort of just introduce here just some, you know, just, 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 just for thought. Well, my beautiful people, here we are to the end of um, this episode of um, today's podcast. I want to thank you very much for spending some time here with us. Um, 
I appreciate it very, very, very much. Don't forget, thumbs up, leave a comment as long as it's a good one. And um, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet, okay? I want to leave you with um, the following. Three things cannot be long hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. That's a quote by Buddha. Take care.